this is my Nexus DSC and I want to show you how to configure it and Deep Sky Planner to work together through a wireless connection. So Nexus DSC is very well suited to this task when it has the Wi-Fi card in it. This is an option you can get and this one happens to have it. If you plan to do wireless connection with your Nexus DSC and your PC, I cannot recommend it strongly enough. It works beautifully. So here's how you set that up. We'll switch on the Nexus DSC. And we need to scroll in the top level menu with an arrow key to the settings menu. There we go. And select it with the OK button. Then I need to uh, move to the Wi-Fi menu. Click OK. And we look at the Wi-Fi menu. We need to take note of the Wi-Fi mode. We want that to be access point so that your uh, PC can see the network and join it. So the next option here is DHCP and we want that disabled. So then I can go to the SSID. Now this is set to Nexus DSC, or at least it should be, and that is the default setting uh, in the Nexus DSC, so we're going to accept that. The password you can set for whatever you wish, but in this case we're going to leave the factory default setting, which is no password, and we'll scroll to the next button and click OK. That takes us to the second page of the Wi-Fi setup. And here you can see the IP address, which you need to take note of because you'll want to assign that in Deep Sky Planner. And we have a uh, mask and gateway settings, which do not affect Deep Sky Planner. And then we come to the channel setting. That setting you're going to want to uh, perhaps change according to your local circumstances. Uh, Wi-Fi operates over a number of radio channels and in your particular environment you may find a lot of Wi-Fi traffic that interferes with the channel your Nexus is using. <clears throat> in my particular case I know that channel 3 will work so I'm going to leave the factory default setting of uh, channel 3 and continue on to the next page. Here it's important that you select the LX200 protocol. That means that the commands transmitted by Deep Sky Planner to the Nexus DSC will use LX200 protocol and you'll have to have that setting for it to work with Deep Sky Planner. And then we'll scroll over to the final setting uh, which is the TCP port number. The factory setting for this is 4060 and I'm going to leave it at that setting and again note this because we need to set that in Deep Sky Planner. So we click OK and we've completed the Wi-Fi setup. Next we need to set up the Deep Sky Planner site. So on the computer where you're going to run Deep Sky Planner, you'll need to join the network presented by the Nexus DSC. So this particular uh, demonstration is being done on a Windows 10 machine. So I'll go down into the system tray and click the network icon and you can see here that the Nexus DSC SSID is not being shown. So I'm going to switch on the Nexus 
and that should enable it to present its SSID. So here it comes, yes. Okay, so now I need to join it or connect to it. And this will spin for a few moments uh, as it tries to determine whether it can get to the internet, but it will not do so. So we should be connected to Nexus at this point. Next thing I need to do is configure Deep Sky Planner with the Nexus communication parameters. And we do that by choosing Equipment Observer and down to Digital Setting Circles. Click. Now these are the controls that allow you to configure any of the Digital Setting Circles devices supported by Deep Sky Planner. And we need to choose Nexus DSC. We can connect via serial or we can connect via Wi-Fi. So let's do the Wi-Fi choice. And the IP address and TCP port were configured in Nexus and we were supposed to remember those values. So they were 10.0.0.1, which is the factory default, and I've entered it here. And the TCP port was 4060, which is the factory default, and I've entered that here. So next I'll click the test button to make sure that we have the communication settings correct. And we do. So the last thing is the enable push to checkbox. Only one device can be enabled for push to at a time. So if you have more than one of these devices enabled for push to, you will get an error message when you click OK. You should check only one. If you don't check any, the push to uh, feature will not be available to you. So I'm going to leave this checked and save all settings. Once we have the communication connection settings configured, we need to put the Nexus DSC into the proper mode so that it is listening for push to commands from Deep Sky Planner. So in order to do that, we switch on the Nexus if it's not already on. And this is the top level menu. So this time we need to cursor to the Find menu, click OK, and we need to cursor to From Planetarium. You have to select that mode with OK. Now the display of Nexus is showing you um, the larger numbers at the bottom of the screen indicate where the telescope is currently pointing. And I don't have any encoders attached at this point, so we have big question marks uh, about what object is there. Um, when you transmit a push to command to Nexus DSC, the coordinates shown in the upper right portion of the display uh, will change to the coordinates of your requested target. So right now that shows 0, 0, 0. Um, RA and the declination at zero degrees. So you can watch that area to see uh, coordinates transmitted to Nexus DSC and then you'll know exactly how to uh, push your telescope to zero in on the target. Now we want to actually use the push to feature so that is available from any of these reports that you can generate in Deep Sky Planner. They're available in the Deep Sky reports where you search a catalog, a reference catalog, star reports the same way, and observing plan reports. So I will go ahead and try that with the September Web Society uh, Galaxy of the Month plan. And what we can do is right click on an item 
and choose push to. Now you can see that there's a hotkey sequence you can use. If you're out in the field and using the mouse isn't what you want to do. But I'm going to click that and you can hear the nexus. That particular item is below the horizon so we got the alarm sound from nexus. But as I look at the display it has moved to that position.